I'm going to I'm going to make an assumption. I, Mr. Sullivan is here, and I, I realize uh, the other witnesses uh, may not be able to the, from the previous panel uh, because of scheduling may not be unable to stay and, and listen to the testimony. I assure the members of the uh, witnesses of the second panel we have representatives from those agencies. So your testimony is very important, not just for the information you provide members of the committee, but also those very agencies that. Uh, we've been discussing in their actions. Uh, again, I'll be introducing the witnesses uh, right before they testify. Instructions of the witnesses again. Uh, green light means you have the five minutes. And the yellow light comes on, that's one minute. And then red, that's the end of your five minutes. But please understand your full statements are made part of the record. And further, we will have time for questions and answers. And again, just like the other witnesses, you may be able to uh, elaborate on some of the information you wish uh, to provide us. The first witness is Mr. Paul. Paul Renker. Mr. Paul Renker is the principal of Renker Ike Parks Architects in St. Petersburg, Florida. His firm specializes in educational facilities and historic restoration. Mr. Renker is testifying on behalf of the American Institute of Architects. Founded in 1857, AIA is the leading association for licensed architects with more than 83,000 members. Welcome, Mr. Renker. Uh, good morning, Mr. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, and members of the subcommittee. Um, I am Paul Ranker. I'm an architect, small business owner, and a member of the American Institute of Architects. <clears throat> thank you for inviting me to discuss the federal procurement regulation that has been identified under the SBA's R3 initiative as being burdensome on small businesses that contract with the federal government. Commonly referred to as the retainage clause, the Federal Acquisition Regulation Rule for Fixed Price Architectural Engineering Services allows federal agencies to impose a 10% withholding or retainage on fees. This 10% can be held until the full construction of a project. This retainage clause presents an unnecessary burden to nearly 230,000 small AE firms who contract with the federal government. This is a strong deterrent for small firms for three reasons. First, 10% is higher than the amount withheld under many other types of service contracts. For small design firms with a very small profit margin, having 10% of their fee held back for what could be years greatly restricts their cash flow. Secondly, AE firms typically complete the major portion of their work in the design phase long before construction is complete. This leaves design firms short of 10% of the payment amount for a substantial period of time. The result, as the chairman of the American Council of Engineering Companies Small Firms Council recently said, is an interest-free loan to the federal agencies at the small firm's expense. Third, a 10% retainage requirement is not necessary in order to protect the taxpayers. There are common methods of determining whether performance of AE services has been satisfactory long before payment of services or completion of construction. Furthermore, the withholding is counter to the Brooks Act, which establishes the Qualifications-Based Selection Process, or QBS, for AE firms. QBS ensures that only the most competent and capable firms, those with a proven track record of good performance, are selected for design contracts with federal agencies even before they negotiate potential fees. I'd like to take a few moments to relate our firm's first experience with a federal project. Through the QBS process, our firm was chosen and awarded a contract to design a new job corps center for the Department of Labor in St. Petersburg, Florida. This was a small business award, and we're very proud and happy to have been selected. We started fee negotiations in June of 2006. We received our first payment for services approximately 220 days from the start of fee negotiations. I mention this because our firm, as a small business, has to staff and plan for large projects such as this. This resulted in our firm incurring costs and expenses for salaries and overhead for 220 days without compensation. We were forced to borrow money to maintain our salaries and expenses. When compensation was received, 10 percent was withheld, further impacting our cash flow. We understand that the intent of the 10 percent retainage is to protect the interests of the government and the taxpayers and to help ensure they receive services equal to or greater for what they've paid. However, this is already addressed under the system in which architects and engineers provide services. 
The Department of Labor contract we signed includes a handbook and detailed description of services and deliverables required for payment. We are required to submit progress documentation of our work at four key milestones. In each case, professionals hired by the Department of Labor review our work in great detail for compliance with submittal requirements as well as the design program intent. Only after our submittal is reviewed and approved is our invoice for services accepted and processed for payment. The 10% retainage of our fees was held in increasing amounts over the entire period of our design services. It should be noted that 10% is not retained from the contractor's pay request during construction. We were told we could write a letter requesting the Department of Labor release our retainage for design services. We received our 10% retainage approximately 500 days after our contract notice to proceed. As the Small Business Committee is dedicated to opening federal marketplace to small businesses, we strongly encourage it to support eliminating the retainage. This will ensure that small AE firms are able to design the buildings that represent the federal government without placing their solvency in, in jeopardy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee for giving me the opportunity to testify today. I'd be pleased to answer any questions you may have.